And thanks for joining us for this very special edition of Weekend Winners, proudly brought to you by One Equine for the Equine Athlete. And we have reached the, uh, the crescendo of the Constellations for 2024, the final night coming up this weekend, and it's a uh, star-studded program. The Grand Circuit event is the Blacks are Fake, featuring the best pacer in the country, Leap to Fame. He's got barrier one for this feature. Can he redeem himself after being beaten last year behind Swayze? Well, it's all pointing towards victory with Leap to Fame there. We've got the inaugural running of the Proto Star, this half-million-dollar feature for the two-year-olds. What a race it's going to be. Unfortunately, we've got an early scratching, the Star Philly. Bittersweet comes out. We've got the Oaks. We've got the Derby. We've got the Trotters Cup and a very good four-year-old championship as well. So there's a lot to talk about in this edition of Weekend Winners. The boys are back with me, Darren Clayton and Ryan Spice. Darren... This is going to be a great night tomorrow night. What a way to end the carnival. Absolutely. Across the board, this is one of the strongest meetings we've had at the creek. Um, yeah, take your pick which race. They're all high quality and they're all, um, I don't think they're clear cut as some of the markets might suggest. Okay, Ryan, how do you see Saturday night? And at this point, are you on the right side of the ledger? Yeah, I think I'll be coming in with my nose in front. So very happy with that. A wonderful card of racing, the Derby, the Oaks. Can't wait for the Proto Star. Okay. okay, what about Leap to Fame? Barrier One. Probably the one draw that Grant Dixon didn't want. He was the one that made the uh, the selection at the Barrier Draw function earlier in the week. So he's got Barrier One. He's got the speeds to turn it up to his outside. It's going to be intriguing at the start. Yep. Time to uh, muscle up and out he pops. Okay. What are your early thoughts on that one, Darren? Yeah, it's, it's so many what ifs. I think there's so many scenarios. If the emergency gains a start, that shuffles that map up altogether again with that early speed. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure what's going to happen there. Okay, there's a big quaddy jackpot as well with Tab. $55,000 starting pool, so it's going to swell quite nicely. Races five, six, seven and eight. So that will incorporate Leap to Fame's race where he is a clear favourite. We've got all that and more coming up. Stay with us on Weekend Winners. The first of our features that we're going to look at for Saturday night is race number three, the four-year-old championship. Last year, this race won by Can't Find a Better Man, and this year's edition is an absolute ripper. There's star-studded uh, horses stepping out here, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the boys come up with. Firstly, Ryan, a question without notice. Um, is the four-year-old championship a better race on paper than the rising sun we saw a fortnight ago? Oh, geez, Chris, I don't think it lacks for any quality, mm. that's for sure. Um, I think you can make an argument in, in favour of that. Yeah. Darren, your thoughts? Yeah, definitely. I, yeah. I think, you know, there's already a couple of Eureka runners in there as well. Um, obviously, Freethinker won his way through, but um, sure thing Captain coming into the field too, that throws a little bit of interest in as well, despite the tough gate. Yeah, I'll get to your speed map in just a moment. Ryan, I'm keen to get your thoughts here. Whisper a secret, he is the favourite at this point in time. He went off at nice odds when he won the uh, the Rising Sun a fortnight ago. Now we're forced to take much skinnier odds. So just from your viewpoint, is that a little bit of a, a worrying sign or just a, a little bit of a warning that if you didn't get him in the Rising Sun, you're not going to be diving in on the weekend, given the current quote? I think with the elevated barrier draw to the front line, we know he loves to stomp out a big uh, victory on the front end. He's four from five when leading. Pete can stoke him up and uh, go for an all-the-way win. So I think the, the evens is actually fair value. Okay. Yeah. Are you mapping him in front? Yeah, I think Pete needs to make full use of the draw. Just what's there, he can get to the front. I think that those two is outside on the front line, probably don't want to sit parked over 21 uh, if he's rolling along, which he can do. So um, that sort of plays to his favour. Yeah. Are you surprised he hasn't been picked up for the Eureka at this point in time? Yeah, really. Yeah. Um, when you look at the fact that uh, some of those that are already in there and the fact that you know he's got the wins on the board, he, you go through his, he's very, been very good at the mile and now he's got 2100 form as well. He's runner up in a Queensland derby last year as a three-year-old as well, so he's got it all. Well, it's basically only Kevin and Kim, uh, Seymour's slot that's left, so maybe they're watching this race tomorrow night to see which way they're going to go, so it'll be interesting. So with the speed map, you've got Whisper a Secret in front, where do you have some of these other key runners? Yeah, well, I think uh, Artie's flash, we know he, he certainly has good gate speed, whether they want to try to kick up, I know little Louie also has good gate speed and Aaron Dunn will be looking to get across. So I think the form that RD's flash is probably in at the moment, it makes sense just to, to get a, a soft trip and 
that with that in mind, I thought little Louie could get across first and then take a sit on Whisper a Secret. I think for real life, um, if they want to go forward on him, he's going to sit parked. Otherwise, he's out the back. And um, we saw Frankie Ferocious take take hold in the Rising Sun. Uh, if it wasn't for that flat tyre, he probably runs on a little bit. So if they take off the gate again, so I think Whisper a Secret gets to the front. I think that gives Rock and Roll Hammer a nice run through. Captain's Knock probably slides under the back of him, and I think then you've got horses like Frankie Ferocious, sure thing captain, um, forced to, to come three wide at some point. So with Whisper a Secret in front, I, I think he can go all the way. Ryan, what do we do with Frankie Ferocious in this race? Uh, fair or unfair, he's been horrendous during this campaign. Flop first up, excuses last time out with that wheel issue. A lot of people saying he wouldn't have won anyway, but where do you have him right now? And he's one of the major players for the Eureka. Yeah, like he was the big star, one of the big stars mm -hmm. coming into the carnival. Um, I think from a betting perspective, you have to wait to see him do it on the track before you can entertain him again, unfortunately. Okay. Um, and with if this race was a mile, maybe you'd mm -hmm. sort of think about it, but uh, 2100, middle trip, they're gonna run hard. You have to see him do it first before you can go back there, I think. Okay. Do you think it will be a case for Kevin and Kay Seymour, just talking about the Eureka, that they'll make their decision dependent on the result of this race? I think if Whisper of Secret comes out here and just belts them, their hands forced. Yeah. Okay. All right. What are you tipping here, Darren, for this race? Yeah. I'll go with Whisper of Secret, the local. I think he gets to the front and he's too good. Captain's Knock, really good each way play, I think. He's just, he's running super, just not getting anything. Uh, his own way at any stage, he's coming off second line gates, making good runs. Rock and Roll Hammer, I'll, I think he can certainly run a good race here and I'll throw in Frankie Ferocious there, but yeah, confidence is not high with him. Like Ryan said, I need to see him do it. All right, Ryan, you're with Whisper a Secret? Yeah, I'm with Whisper a Secret to, to lead all the way here and I've thrown Duke of Scotland in the emergency into my numbers. If he gets a start, uh, look out everyone, flying that horse. He's still on the up. Captain's Knock, super last week, just getting nosed off in a sub 50 mile. And Blazing Home didn't have a lot of joy either. He can um, have a cheap pegs run and, and be poking through. All right, so your number's there, four, two, 10 and eight. We're all coming up with Whisperer's Secret, uh, the last start rising sun winner, trying to get a start in the Eureka. This is a, a perfect uh, opportunity to really cement himself a, a spot in that field. And the stables had a wow of a carnival, there's no denying that. Pete uh, McMullen and Chantel Turpin, they've had great success and here's another good opportunity tomorrow night with this four-year-old championship. So he's on top for me. Captain's not racing really well, just can't get a draw. Little Louie up from Victoria, I think he'll race well. And Rock and Roll Hammer going really well also. So four, ten, three, nine. That is the four-year-old championship. That is an outstanding standing line up there for that group three feature. Start time, 6.25. The Group 1 Queensland Oaks comes up as race number four last year. This race, it was a local victory, a big upset as well. Talk like motion shot to victory to take that race for Wayne and Lynn Graham with Shane driving. Who is going to claim the 2024 version? Well, we're here to discuss this big event. So there's a lot to look forward to with this race. Millwood Bliss is the clear favourite. We had disappointing news earlier in the week. Very pretty. The New South Wales Oaks winner, she didn't make the trip from Victoria, so she's an early scratching, paving the way for the emergency reason to shine to secure a start. So we're going to look at the replay of Millwood Bliss. This is her winning last time out in the Rising Sun Consolation, and that horse that she's following, she sits in the trail there as we pick up the replay. The horse she's trailing is I Keep Smiling, who subsequently come out and won the Group 1 Golden Girl. That is outstanding form. So here she is, back against her own age, and obviously up against her own sex. She goes to the inside there. I keep smiling in front. Millwood Bliss had some work to do, but she was able to pick up, shoot through, and just edge out. I keep smiling. Van Basten running third there. He came out and won last Saturday night. So the form around this filly is outstanding. Ryan, she's at an odds-on quote. She's a very good filly. It looks her race to lose on paper. Absolutely, Chris. She has earned that price, uh, currently around $1.50 in markets. She looks very, very hard to beat and one of the best bets on the program. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, tactically, this race could be interesting, uh, Darren, because Chantel Turpin's got a number of runners here, a couple of which have drawn the front row. Riley Rainbow won, Xena Rainbow to the outside of Millwood Bliss. Millwood Bliss probably most expecting to rifle straight to the lead. Will it be as easy as it sounds? I don't think it's 
it's a group one race. Yeah. You don't you don't just get gifted a, a lead in that type of race. And Riley Rainbow, she's a very good filly, filly in her own right. And um, of course, she made the New South Wales Oaks final herself. I think she's got good speed off the arm. We you draw a line through it. Um, she worked to the front in a race not too long back. The Duke of Scotland released and sat on her back. So, you know, I think they'd be quite bullish that they can opt for an all-way. And this is a 2100 metre event as well. The New South Wales Oaks was 2400 or 2300. So um, it's not the, the 13 furlongs that the boys have to go over. So, yeah, I, I can see that they want to hold the front here on Riley Rainbow. OK. Just a quick one. Uh, w with Millwood Bliss... Was she always going to start favourite, even allowing a very pretty was hit? Yeah, in my mind, yeah. with, with the barrier draw advantage, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, she's got great gate speed, Millwood Bliss. For me, she spears straight over and dictates on the front end. Okay, okay so Ryan's got a clear cut straight to the front for Millwood Bliss. How are you mapping this race? Yeah, I, I'm sticking with the fact that Riley Rainbow can kick through and hold. If they do want to release, obviously Millwood Bliss is the one that they let go. But, um, you know, I, th I think that they'd be bullish enough with the chances of Riley Rainbow. Already a Group 1 winner. She won the triad last year here at the Creek as a two-year-old. So if they hold up early, well, um, that gives Artie B. Mickey a perfect trip on her back. Just be a matter of Riley Rainbow getting her to the lane. So um, if Millwood Bliss sort of burns a little bit too early, well, then maybe uh, Brad Hewitt looks for cover. That's what I can uh, potentially see in Everart would be the one that would... Uh, naturally roll forward, or Xena Rainbow. So, um, love Arresha, she's going really well, this filly as well. From gate two, she should get a nice trip. If Riley Rainbow holds up, will then look like Diamond's probably three fence and um, fill their slots thereafter. That's how I can foresee it playing out. Okay, Ryan, the fact that Riley Rainbow's gate one, RDB Mickey the stable mate, drawn directly behind it, does that sort of sway you in any way for them to hold with Riley Rainbow? Look, I'd give it consideration if it was a mile. Um, you know, they might be tempted, but here over 21, I think to give Riley Rainbow her best chance to finish in her highest possible position, she, sh she takes a sit. Okay. What are you tipping to win the Queensland Oaks, Darren? I'm still tipping Millwood Bliss on top. She's the class filly, and like you uh, outlined in, in that earlier piece, she brings the best form lines. Um, you know, I keep smiling. She got her late. Um, really good drive, that too, from Brad Hewitt. You don't see drivers relinquish the lead at the 700 at Albion Park, but he knew what he did, what he had to do to beat I Keep Smiling. So, yeah, 3, 8, 1 and 4 for me. I think it will be dominated up on that front end. All right, Ryan, you're tipping Millwood Bliss as well. Yeah. 3, 8, 1 and 9 for me. I'm happy to sneak the Victorian, who was very brave in defeat, mm. sitting parked in the southeast. Oaks look like diamonds in for fourth. So if there was, if there was a little sneaky upset and one to, to fill a placing, I think the Victorian can go well. Okay, it'll be interesting to see how they drive that filly as well. She looks like she's quite a, a headstrong filly. So uh, with that nice trailing draw, does he go to the fence or does he stay one off? So uh, we'll soon find out there with uh, with David Miles which way he's going to go. I'm going three, four, eight, nine. I think she's the best on the program. Millwood Bliss. That form out of that last start, absolutely outstanding. Draws well. Happy to dive in there at the short quote. So three, four, eight, nine. That is the Queensland Oaks. That's the first of our Group 1 features. Start time for that race coming through at 7.01. The Group 1 Queensland Derby for 2024 looks a very open affair. There's uh, several that you can make very strong cases for. We've got representation from New Zealand, Victoria, New South Wales and the host state Queensland. Last year, this race won by the Lost Storm. Team Emma Stewart, Clayton Tonkin, they're back with Bay of Biscay lining up in this race. He's got to overcome a second row, but he comes up with very good credentials. We're yet to see him during the carnival, so it's a hit-run mission for Bay of Biscay. Can he take it? Well, we're about to find out. Let's have a look back at the replay, though, of Major Hot, the Kiwi. He's low-flying. He's been really good during this Brisbane campaign. He was able to take out the three-year-old feature here last week. He's buried away on the inside. The speed was on. Uh, that's Minos out in front, Major Hot, three back on the inside, gets the run, and just watch him sort of zoom up the inside here as they wheel into the home straight. As soon as he gets open space, he rockets to the line, Major Hot, and he goes on for a good victory. So, he's certainly one of the major players, but it's an awkward draw. It certainly looks a little uh, awkward on paper for Major Hot. Ryan, what was your first thought about the Queensland Derby for mine? 
looks really open. Yeah, Chris, this is a wide open derby. And for me, this is the one feature race on the night where I think we could get a, a long price winner. Okay, and this is the first leg of the quaddy as well. So we're looking for value. Darren, last year, the Lost Storm, very short. He dominated the week prior. Uh, this is a different scenario this year. As I said, you can make cases for most. Who was the first horse that sort of, you know, gravitated to you when you looked at the field? The first one that jumped out was Minos. He's been desperately unlucky this Queensland campaign from barrier draw perspective. Second row at Redcliffe, gate seven here at the creek, and then he comes up with two, gate speed horse. He's the one that just leapt out to straight away. But um, like you say, you make a case for a lot of these horses. It's gonna depend a lot what happens in the run. Um, you know, I, I like Bay of Biscay as a horse. Yeah, I think he's got a very high speed and um, how that plays out over 2,600 metres, I'm, I'm not really sure. And the price, while I think he may be the best horse in the race, it doesn't appeal to me. OK, he was placed in the New South Wales Derby earlier this year, Bay of Biscay. So a question, they've got the two runners, uh, Emma Stewart, Clayton Tonkin, they won the race last year with the Lost Storm. Bay of Biscay, clearly better than Kingman, or there's not a great deal between them? Oh, I don't think there's a great deal between them on ability, but in this scenario, I would clearly have Bay of Biscay over... Kingman, because of the barrier draw, I think Kingman has to roll forward. I think he's going to be in for a torrid trip. Um, Bayo Biscay will, I think, sit out the back, come with one run. So if they do overdo it, you know, he clearly can win. But uh, horses that have travelled in the week of their grand final, I want to avoid. Okay. Why? Um, I'd rather be on horses that I know that are here, that are rock hard fit and ready to go. Okay. So map this race for us, Darren, because it's probably, again, not easy. Minos, as you said, lands gate two. So Robbie Morris, does he get aggressive? We'll talk with Robbie a little bit later. So you would think from gate two, this is his big grand final. He's out to make a statement. Yeah, absolutely. And that's his bread and butter, isn't it, Robbie? Just to, to get aggressive and get forward. And um, he's got the gate to do it. Ironclad to his inside, I don't think would be wanting to hold up. So, um, you know, he gets the perfect trip. Kingman, like um, Ryan said, probably has to roll forward at some point. And I, c I can foresee, I, I know Bay of Biscay is probably best with one run, whether they just take that out of the equation and get around at some point um, just to get outside Minos and, and see if they can maybe pinch a, a cheaper quarter somewhere in the middle. I think they fill their spots from there. Safer, probably three back defence at uh, some stage you would expect. Uh, if, if they do shuffle up, Maybe he's buried a little bit further. So um, Major Hot, unfortunately, he's probably out the back there doing some work at some point. In excess, he's flying, but second line draw doesn't help him either. OK, Ryan, can you get your thoughts on Soho Spectre? So he failed in the Reckliff Derby. Uh, he got eaten alive in the Rising Sun. Can he turn it around? It's been a fortnight between runs. He's the New South Wales Derby winner. He's a key horse in many ways and largely forgotten in this race. Do you give him any sort of chance here? I think it's difficult to turn your form around in, in such a short space of time. He is a, the New South Wales Derby winner, but if you, if you go back to that, he, um, he sat three pegs, he kind of was the sniper, didn't do any early work. So I think if they go back to that type of role, don't gas him off the arm, take cover, take the shortcuts, then he can certainly win. Um, is he true, is 2600 going to be his, his pet trip? Not sure. Um, same with Bayo Biscay, I have that question mark, they seem brilliant types. Mm -hmm. If uh, Robbie Morris can be desperate, push through, lead, and really turn and turn the screws, and it's a real true staying test, I have question marks over those sort of naturally brilliant types. Okay, let me jump ahead then and ask this question. This is the first leg of the quaddy. There's a big quaddy jackpot. Is Soho Spectre going in your quaddy combo? Only in my wide one. Okay. All right. What are you tipping, Darren, to win the Queensland Derby? I'm sticking with Bay of Biscay. I just think that brilliance um, that he has... Like I said, the price doesn't appeal to me, but I've tipped him on top. Minos is going to get his chance in front. Major Hot, he's probably the big knockout hope, and probably one that you look at, the, the 2600 will really suit those Kiwi breads, and um, you know he's got form over it. And Delirio, look for him flying home again at the end, as he did last time out, and, and nearly got there. He was unlucky not to win that South East derby. Absolutely. He was absolutely motoring and he's had good form all season. Mm. Um, you know, over 1,600, 2,100. Has to jump up to the, the 26 here, but... Is that a concern? No. no I concern. think off a soft trip, which he's likely just snag back, come with one run like he did in that last start, um, you know, 
peeling the paint off the outside fence, he can really rattle home. All right, so Darren tipping the Victorian Bay of Biscay. Ryan, you're going with? Yeah, I'm with Minos on top to beat Ironclad, Safer and Major Hot. For me, 2600 metre, the map's going to be critical. If Minos doesn't lead and the map doesn't play out, then probably uh, my selected suggestions are confetti. But if it plays out, I really think the peg line's going to come to the front four here. So yeah, I think Minos is hardest to beat, but I give huge chances to both the Grant Dixon trained Ironclad and the Nathan Dawson driven Safer. Okay. I'm tipping 12 major hot. I like what I've seen so far during this Brisbane campaign. He comes into this race full of confidence off that last start victory. And they've got options. Uh, he's very good sit sprint. He can lead up. He's not going to lead, obviously, with this second row draw. But he proved last week if he can follow the right horse, he's going to be hard to stop at the finish. So 12 on top for me, major hot. Minos is the big winner with the barrier draw. I think they've got to be aggressive here. They'll make a bold bid for victory. I think the janitor could be the, the surprise packet if they overdo it. And if he gets that card into it, he could be a real threat. I like the effort in the South East Derby. He had that checkered passage up the home straight with kick the switch. And Bay of Biscay, I, I respect him. But uh, it's an interesting derby. There's no question about it. Uh, many of these are unproven at the long trip. So it'll be interesting to see who is the other fittest in this field. That is the Queensland Derby. It's a Group 1 feature. Start time, 7.36. And it's the first leg of the quaddy. Half a million dollars is up for grabs with the inaugural running of the Ladbrokes Proto Star. A race for the two-year-olds, a slot race style concept. We've got the early scratching, important early scratching of the star filly, bittersweet. So that paves the way for Dance with Karma to get a start. And for those wondering, Dance with Karma will start from barrier four, the same gate that bittersweet was drawn in. So it's a lot like the Greyhounds in that respect. So Dance with Karma, Luke McCarthy, will run from barrier four. The all-important lead-up race uh, for this event tomorrow night was last Saturday night, the Wayne Wilson Memorial Paleface Adios Classic. Many of the contenders lining up tomorrow night went around in this race, and it was an upset with Sweet on Lexi scoring. Fader Waits went under, Bittersweet went under, and it was Sweet on Lexi that came out on top. So let's pick up the replay here. Sweet on Lexi outside of Fader Waits, really applying heavy pressure. Bittersweet is in the trail. 40 Love sitting 1-1, one, one. and that's Hesitate with the green lid. Three back on the inside, Dance with Karma follows up behind 40 Love coming deep there as they wheel into the home straight. So, Sweet on Lexi drives to the lead, puts away Fade Awaits. We've got uh, 40 Love, Hesitate, Bittersweet down on the inside, Dance with Karma deeper out, but in the end, it's Sweet on Lexi scoring from Hesitate, Bittersweet, 40 Love. Ryan. What was your first thought when you looked at this field? Because this is going to be probably the race of the night. We've got big money up for grab. It's one mile. They're going to go like uh, scalded cats. Yeah, I think uh, my first opinion was, geez, a week's a long time in racing. Mm. With uh, If you thought a week ago, Fader Waits would have drawn barrier one in this, this race, you would have been thinking he would jump a clear favourite. Um, we don't have the filly, bittersweet, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, that really detracts from the race, which is a shame. Uh, great race, half a million dollars up for grabs. I agree with your uh, take that that's going to be hot in the kitchen. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you forgive and forget with Fader Waits? Like, he's around, what, seven, eight dollars. Do you forgive and forget, or are you a little cautious, a little nervous? Does the scratching of bittersweet sort of just temper your enthusiasm for Fader Waits? Yeah. My plan is to save on him. So, if he wins the race, I'm not going to lose, but I'm certainly not going to make him a big winner. Okay. What are you doing, Darren? Fade away. So I know you're big on this guy. Did he disappoint you last week? Can he rebound? Do you forgive and forget? Yeah, I. he did disappoint, I think. I think on face value, I was trying to find a way, some sort of excuse. I think he was disappointing. Um, but that said, these are two-year-olds. They A week is a long time in racing. He can bounce back and he can bounce back hard with a vengeance. Um, it's, like you say, this is a really, really top race. The fact that... We wouldn't p get this pool of horses in one race under any other scenario than this race, this Proto Star. So it's it's really exciting. Um, you know, your size stakes style racing, we just don't see two-year-olds come together like this. So really looking forward to it. Um, some really eye-catching runs out of that replay. I thought 40 Love was just as good. You see him just miss out. 
he snagged back from gate seven. He drew gate seven in that, and there was a little bit of a, a scrimmage at the um, sort of the 1200 when Fatal Weights came out to get around him. Aaron Dunn was sort of had to juggle up into a position, and um, Fatal Weights he went pretty hard to get the front at that point. Thought hesitate, hit the line nicely, and even Dance with Karma he was he was finishing off pretty well in those closing stages. So all in all, it's top race. Fresh blood this week. The highlight reel, my alderman Barney Sagano. How do you rate them? Um, really keen that Miles Mabani is a, a clear winning hope. What he did at Penrith was outstanding. Henny's only had to come up from New South Wales travel wise, so I'm, I'm really keen there that he's a, a major player. Again, the Emma Stewart runners, they're flowing up from Victoria. Um, young horses, first time off the property. I've got my question marks. I actually don't know how much gate speed the highlight reel has. Can mm. he really force to the front or will he need to be basically waved on by to, to roll there? So there's no way I could take odds on, um, despite um, his performances being amazing so far. Great race, um, race of the carnival. Yeah, yep. you, you can, can make, make a good case day. for it. How do you map this race? Do you have fadeaways holding? No, I think they'll opt for a trial. Um, he's not that overly quick out, from what we've seen anyway. Um, there's a, a couple of runs where he sort of just took a little bit of, of time just to wind up. That said, I think 40 Love, he'll be pushing forward. He'll be wanting to get to the front, I think, at some point. And um, he's a perfect horse to take a trail on. So uh, the highlight rail, again, like Ryan said, not sure of his speed. So um, he could come out and blast out and go straight to the front. Who knows? But I don't think that's happening. We did see him. Interestingly, he comes into this race fresh. He hasn't raced since April. He's had a couple of trials. One of those trials, Hesitate took really good ground off him. So I don't know what to read into that. It's um, so much. And then Sweet on Lexi. He was super last week sitting parked, but can he do, do the tough stuff two weeks in a row? I hope your speed map is right because my selection is 40 love. I think he's tremendous value in this race. Last week he had gate seven. Moves into gate two. He's got early speed, and I think they'll want to hold uh, the highlight reel early, in particular going into that first turn. If he rolls into the uh, the van, he's going to take a power of beating, and he'll strip a lot fitter for that run. So he's my on-top selection. I think he's good value, number 240 love. The highlight reel I respect, but this is by far and away his biggest challenge for a number of reasons. Hesitate was an eye-catcher last week, and fade away, because he's got barrier one, I'll give him some sort of chance, but... I was disappointed with him last week. Two, three, nine, one. Ryan, which way are you going? Yeah, nine hesitate on top here for me. I love the driver switch. Big race driver, Kate Gath, jumps on for the Ladbroke slot. Massive flashing light run last week. His own personal last quarter was 26-4. He was the run out of the, the prelude last week for me that just ticked all the boxes. Hesitate on top. Fade awaits from the Great Barrier. Forgive and forget. Certainly won't be losing if he wins. And I do think Miles and McBarney, if he can work forward and then say end up 1-1, clear winning hope, and uh, have to tip your hat to what Sweet on Lexi did last week. Okay, Darren, which way are you going? Yeah. I'm sticking with Fade away, so I think he bounces back. I'll, I'll, I'll forgive the run. Um, one, three, six, and nine for me. The highlight reel, I just, I'm not sold on him. Miles and McBarney, massive runs in down in New South Wales, that Penrith win huge and hesitate. Uh, be good to see him get up as well. So one, three, six, nine. Okay, that's the Proto Star. It's race number six on the program. Start time for that race, 8.08. The Grand Circuit feature is race seven. This is the Blanks of Fake. It features Leap to Fame. He's out for redemption last year. Swayze was able to beat Leap to Fame. This is the race where Leap to Fame had that wheel issue from about the 350 metre mark onwards. Last year, the winning time was 154 for the 2680. Do they eclipse that? Well, time will tell. Let's have a look at last week's Sunshine Sprint replay featuring Leap to Fame. That's him out in front. He went race record time, 150 flat. The year prior, he went 150.2 coming off the speed. So he's been very consistent time-wise in the Sunshine Sprint. Ryan, did we learn anything out of last week's Sunshine Sprint when we're looking ahead to the Grand Circuit feature this weekend? No, I don't use it as too much of a pointer. I think mm. it's a fresh slate here. Amazing the barrier draw. Leap to fame barrier one, Swayze barrier eight. The two barriers each horse didn't want. Yeah. And then all of Grimson runners off the back row. It's Couldn't script it any yeah. better. Yeah, I, I tell you what, uh, just looking at that replay, it's hard to ignore the run of Nerano out of last week. Sectionally, his last 400 was just unbelievably good. And I think the 2600 favours him as well, mm. So rather than the mile. So, yeah, he's, um, he's going really well, that horse. Hasn't had a lot of luck. Did get over the top of Swayze in the 
uh, one of the lead ups, the Lucky Creed, I think it was, uh, to the carnival. Yeah, going going really well. And that race was 2680 as well. So, Ryan, all the talk is about the start here. Leap to fame one, turn it up in two. We'll get to Darren's speed map in just a moment. Can lightning strike twice here for Grand Dixon? He pulled off that master stroke move when he won the, the one dies mate. Can he do it again? Yes, absolutely. Um, Will they fall for it? Rival drivers again? I don't think it's a matter of falling for it, Chris. I think it's one thing to have the intent to achieve the goal, but executing and delivering is, mm. is another. Um, I, in the one dies mate, I, you know, I tried to make a really big case for Leap to Fame actually having enough early tow to, to keep his feet up. Yeah. I was totally wrong. And we just see how fast Turn It Up is and that vacuum of space that he creates in behind. I think Grant can use that to his advantage and half get out. And if he's half out, I'm thinking he's in the two wide line before they know it. Okay, okay. so that leads me to uh, a question for you. How long will it take before we see Leap to Fame in front? He'll be in front by the 1900. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, I'll hold you to that. Uh, you'll get a special cheerio in the call if he's in front by the 1900. So you're mapping him in front at the bell, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think he gets there. I think the space creates. I'm, I'm really keen on Black Sedan's taking an early shot here. He is a horse that has never had a decent gait in a feature race. He drew the front line in the Interdom Consolation. Pretty similar gait, five or six, I think, off memory from that. He pushed forward and took the front off Can't Find a Better Man on that occasion, held on for second. Uh, turn it up, we know how quick he is. I think if Black Sedance comes with him, gets across there and um, gets to the front and then that shuffle up then leap to fame going to the front. The, the Grimson runners there, who knows what happens there. Under that scenario, Swayze's going to be tucked away. I think um, he either has to snag straight back and get off or they're purely driving for luck. And we know he's not really a sit sprinter. So I think they're snagging back at some point. I think that, hi, my name is Jeff, outside the back row, is he the one to come forward? Probably is, district attorney, better saved for one run. So typo, n no help there for him. And Nerano probably just has to find his spot in the running line, following through on the back of Turn It Up. All right, Ryan, I'm fascinated because all the talks about Leap to Fame, and rightly so, what are your thoughts, though, with Swayze? He got owned. He got beat up bad by Leap to Fame last time they met. How do they drive him from that gate? I think he'll just flop out and work straight off, straight into the running line, and he'll be put into the race at some point. He was three weeks between runs off, uh, off being crook, so to speak. I think he was actually excellent in defeat behind Leap to Fame at his last start. I think two weeks between runs now, we'll see a really sharp performance from Swayze. Okay. okay. I know you're tipping Leap to Fame. What are we working the multiples with here behind him? Yeah, I, I, Narano, the respect for him, like you said earlier, that was him in that sunshine sprint really hitting the line. Um, you know, he made it through on his merits to the Inadom final when he was up here last year. He's a horse that loves the trip. Um, he just needs to get the right run and he's going to be factoring in this race. Same with District Attorney. Like I said, Black's a dance. Um, I think he's come good at the right time. He hasn't had a long preparation. Go back and watch the Sunshine Sprint Consolation last week, especially yeah. especially the drone footage. That shows up how much ground he actually made. So. Um, he ran fourth in this race last yeah. year too from five back to fence. So uh, I'm throwing him in my top four, one, 10, 11, four. All right, Ryan, you're going brotherly love here. Yeah, I'm with the two best days in the race, uh, Leap to Fame and Swayze. I think it's, if you look at some of Swayze's performances over the last 12 months over the staying trip, they're, they're insane, they're off the charts. Mm. Despite the bad barriers, I think the cream rises to the top. District attorney flying, will they put him into the race? Um, at some point, or will they just come with one run? I'm not sure. Yet yeah, Narano's going well, and so is Hector as well. His um, his sectionals haven't been too far off what Narano's been doing. So, at uh, nearly three times the price, don't be surprised if he runs a race. Okay, I've got Leap to Fame on top as well. I think Team Grimson represent the uh, the biggest threat. District Attorney hasn't gone a bad race during this Brisbane campaign. And uh, if he gets the opportunity to let down in the home straight, he'll certainly rock it to the line. Narano much the same. And Swayze, 
The concern is the gait and how much work he'll have to do, but uh, as Ryan outlined, he's an extreme stayer. So it's a good raise, no question about it. I'm going 1, 11, 10 and 9. That is the Blacks of Fate. That is the Grand Circuit feature. That is the main race of the night because it's got the headline horse in Leap the Fame. Start time for that feature is 8.41. The last leg of the quaddy is race eight, the last of our group one features. This is the Trotters Cup, and this is going to be a great race. There's no question about it. Last year, this race, won by Majestic Trio, went off at juicy odds as well. Clear favourite for this year's edition is Gus, and he's on the back up after winning the Trotters Sprint last week. And we're going to look at this replay because he was absolutely dominant. He bossed and bullied his way to the front, got the lead from the favourite Mufasa Metro, and just ran his rivals ragged, continuing this excellent form surge right now. Stopped the clock at 54.8, track record 54.7, a tenth of a second outside of the record, and he is just low-flying Gus. So, he's the horse to beat, Ryan. What do we make of barrier number five? Yeah, I think it's, it's perfect. Uh, he can come out under his own steam, keep uh, rocking with attitude to his outside, and hopefully uh, roll onto the top. Mm. That, that's an arrogant look there from Pete McMullen, that sustained look over the shoulder. It's like, where are you guys? Yeah. Definitely, and a uh, bit of a front, front straight bull rush, mm. uh, not the back straight. He caught John Justice unawares, and uh, I don't think he realised that that move was going to be coming so quickly, and quickly it did come, and he just went straight past him. Yeah, he was really impressive last week. The eye catcher out of that race last week, London to a brick, sectionally it backs it up as well. No horse ran a better last 400 than London to a brick, but he's got to overcome another second row draw like he had last week. So is there any chance, in your opinion, that anything is going to park Gus here? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I think Pete Quintana do the same, and flex and push on yeah I have he, I think he's in front as long as he uh, behaves himself he seems to be the complete package now so yeah Gus on the front end extremely hard to beat looks like one of the better bets on the program it'd be a fitting farewell for the carnival for Gus given that he's won the DJA the Trotters sprint and if he takes this group one tomorrow night a clean sweep it'd be a big exclamation mark against his name yeah certainly and um, you've only got to see how far this guy's come um, he's just gone to another level and I think like Ryan said he's the complete package now he's starting to trot much cleaner uh, everything about him is improving so are you got him in front here yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely he gets to the front I think rocking with attitude I think this is the race um, you know four-year-old mare she's stepping up to open company really for the first time I think they can use this race as a real sounding board for her and um, you know press on early off the gate. In the Great Square, we saw David Miles ease back and then come around and, and assert his dominance. I think here, they can have an early look with Gus just allowed that time to balance up. They might be able to shoot across and then hand up to Gus. And under that scenario, that puts her in a great position uh, to, to run a drum at her first go inside open company. You mentioned London to a brick, absolutely flying this guy. His run last week, super. Um, We've seen him driven tough, we've seen him come with one run. He looks to be versatile. I think he can come around them here and uh, get parked and, and run a really good race. Zeller Spur, he's got good speed. He could certainly push on early. Top of the moment's a, a dice roll with him. He's just, uh, at the moment, just not um, doing enough right to get there. So Adele, same sort of scenario. So Gus in front. Okay, yeah. Gus in front for you. Here's a question, just from a punting viewpoint, Ryan. So he's going to be an odds-on favourite for this race tomorrow night, Gus. So do you go one out, or given the fact that he is a trotter, do you sort of have to just put in a couple of insurance sort of players here? Uh, in the last leg of your wide quarter, yeah, have a couple yeah. of insurance, <laughs> yeah, insurance numbers for sure. But I think the majority of your staking plan needs to, to end into Gus, that's for sure. All right, so those last two legs, leap to fame, Gus, you can go one out, but you've got a wider quaddy just to cover all bases. Yes. All right. What are you tipping to win the Trotters' Cup? Gus. Gus. Yeah, Gus. He's so I'm really liking this guy. Yeah. He's really um, just everything about him is pretty cool. He's a cool little dude. So five, six, nine, ten for me. I think rocking with attitude, she'll really step up. I really like this man. All right, Ryan, your thoughts? Yeah, clearly with Gus on top, I think he can replicate what he did last week and uh, bully on the front end. I am really keen on Mufasa Metro to be running a place here, and it's sort of at black odds. I think it's a great bet. We get a driver switch, Ever Justice goes on, I love that. He'll be better for the extra week here mm. uh, in Queensland, and we know he's a high-class performer. He ran second in the Interdom final, so I wouldn't be shocked if he makes a move to the breeze at some point to get on the premises, and he can tough it out to the line. All right.
No, I'm with Gus as well. Big fan of this guy. So, Gus on top. London to a brick. If he can repeat what he did last week, he's certainly going to be amongst the uh, the uh, the action as well. Mufasa Metro, as Ryan outlined, he'll be a lot better tomorrow night. Probably needs to be, given the barrier draw, but I think we'll see a better horse. And rocking with attitude, you can't knock her. She beat London to a brick last time out in the Great Square. That's really good form, and she's got early speed. Five, ten, nine, six. That is the Group 1 at Trotters Cup. Let's trot, baby. Let's go to the interviews now. Robbie Morris, Nathan Dawson both have some key drives tomorrow night. Let's hear their thoughts right now. Leading Sydney driver Robbie Morris, he's been part of the Constellations all the way through. It's the final night this Saturday night, and he's got some key drives, no question. And finally, finally the barrier gods have been a little kind to him as well. I'm sure he's happy about that. Robbie, appreciate the time. No, no, mate. Thanks for having me. Uh, charge ahead, race one. You've picked up this drive for Grant and Trista Dixon. This is the Derby Consolation. You look at his numerical form, it's a little up and down, but when you look back at his replay from last week, he went across the line under a good grip, so he just ran out of racetrack to work with. Is he some sort of chance here? Yeah, I definitely think he is. Obviously, um, you know, Grant and Trista's team are really going super, and he, he looks a really good chance. Obviously, the draw hurts him a little bit, and he's probably... His racing manners, he's a little bit hot and cold and he's still learning the caper, but um, I, you've only got to watch his replay from last week. Adam was sort of running out of room in various times the last 400. So if he can get a good consistent run through to it and get a good helmet to follow, I definitely think he's a good chance. All right, 26.80. This will test out most, if not all, here. How do you think Charger Head will handle it? Uh, he's a big, strong boy. Um, obviously, I think that I actually think the trip will suit him more. It'll just give him a bit more time to get into a good rhythm and, and find his feet. So um, I don't think the journey will hurt him at all. OK, well, let's charge ahead race one. Let's go to race two. This is the Black Safe Consolation. Kanina Prov Lima now importantly comes up with a good draw gate two. What are the early plans? Can he lead here? I think we have to take our shot. Um, Deus Ex is obviously super off the gate, but being 2,600, I think it'll take a sit. Um, we've got to be first there. We won a Ballarat Cup leading um, not that long ago. I don't think his, his numerical form beside his name probably looks a bit plain, but his sectionals have been super. So I think if we can find the front, we'll be looking to hold the front and, and take our shot. He was more than OK last week with his effort when sixth. He was super. You know, he got held up a bit on the last bend and the, things didn't go our way probably for a couple of hundred metres there around the bend, I think if things had went a di different way and he had it got out, um, I think he really could have finished home strong. So I was really pleased with his run last week. All right, so he finally gets a good draw. He's proven at this distance range, so he can run a trip. It looks like Deus Ex will hand over. They've been handing over at a mile, so at 2,600, you'd, you'd expect them to take a sit for sure. Well, I, I think, logically, they'd probably want to take a sit on something that's going to at least hold the front. So... Um, yeah, I'm happy to go all the way. Like I said, he's, he's led a Ballarat Cup field all the way over the same distance and proved hard to chase. So, you know, if we can get there, I think it's our shot at winning the race. All right. Are the main dangers off the second row? A road is in super form. Don Hugo was huge last time out. Bluto, you know what he's capable of. Are they the main rivals here? I think so. You know, obviously, a road was probably a bit stiff to miss out in the Blacks of Fake and Don Hugo as well. You know, it's just it's such a shame that there were so many horses vying for all them spots, but... Both them horses' runs have been terrific. The last their racing the last month's been great. So um, I think they're the two main dangers. And, and obviously, Bluto, he's a classy horse. Obviously, the, the draws with his mistake early on in the Constellations probably hurt him a little bit. But he's, um, he's a lovely horse. If he gets a good cut into it, he's awfully dangerous as well. OK. Let's go to the Group 1 Queensland Derby. I know it's been frustrating for you with Minos. He hasn't drawn a gate. He's had some tough trips. But hopefully it's going to be all worthwhile here on Saturday night. Gate two, were you just thrilled that he landed a decent draw here? Yeah, I was. Um, I just needed him to draw good. I didn't want to go home having to, like his his three runs in Bris in Brisbane have been super. Um, just nothing's gone his way. I thought me drive in the middle there, the, the our Gold Coast Derby was ordinary. Probably hit the go button too early. I, I could see Adams horse getting through the pack, and I sort of tried to beat him to the punch and put all my eggs in one basket, and it didn't come off. So. Probably that was on me, but his, his run here at Redcliffe was terrific and his, his run last week covering a lot of ground. He didn't find the front for like 800 metres, 53 mile, covered a hell of a lot of ground. If we can hold, you know, I think he can hold the front. If he can hold the front and be on the fence, he's going to take some chasing. OK, so do you think you can clear Ironclad who's drawn gate one? I, I don't know if I can clear Ironclad, but I, I think with the prep he's had, he'd probably be happy to, to sit on me. Um, 
knowing full well that there's a lot of other horses coming around us, our, our main goal is to just sort of hold the outside brigade and then sort of force our way to the front if we have to. But I was probably really happy that Soho Spectre drew right beside me. I, I probably didn't want him drawing five and six, but with him drawing right beside me, I think it gives me a bit of options. And he musters really good. He's probably not the fastest Minos, but he musters off the gate really fast. And he was super and he, when he won the gold chalice at Bathurst holding from barrier one. So if we can get the same sort of trip and be in front, I, I think it'll be hard to chase. Okay, 2680, no issues. Nah, he'll love it. He's been crying out for that. I think the, the journey will suit him down to the ground. All right. When you first looked at the field, you saw the good draw. What was your reaction with the field? It, there, there was no standout, was there? No, it's a, you know, the, all the three-year-old races, it's just doesn't matter what you're doing in this day and age or where you're racing or what track you're at. There's not a lot between a lot of these horses and it all comes down to barrier draws and luck in running and fences like gold these days because we're going so fast and you've only got to look at the sectional data that we're all blessed to have. It paints a pretty clear picture. Um, so look, looking at the derby, it's, it's quite open and any horse I think could get a good trip and win that race. So we just haven't had the barrier draw gods on our side, but we do on... Saturday night, so we've got to try and take full advantage of it. Well, fingers crossed. Uh, luck is on your side there on Saturday night. He is going extra well. What about the big one? The blanks are fake. Simply Sam, uh, a real eye catcher two starts ago. How did you grade the run last week in the Sunshine Sprint? Yeah, I was really happy with him. He come off, can't find a better man's back and pretty well finished level with him on the line. It's just when, when Larry's in front doing what Larry does and you've got to come three and four deep, it's line ball on impossible. I just think it goes to show how good the run of Narano was. His run was out of this world, making ground, coming wide. Um, I was really happy with Simply Sam. He swelled up on the helmet good. When I did move him off the helmet, he, he felt like he let down really good. But when they're getting home in a back half like they were, it's mathematically impossible to make ground. So, look, it, we're under no illusion. He needs a little bit of luck and he needs them to go hard and he needs plenty of shaking out in the middle of the mile there somewhere. And... Hopefully over the 2,600, a few of them will be moving and getting a few spots. So if they all go hard and he can get up the rail and through the middle of them, he'll be hitting the line as good as anything. Surely we're going to get a decent tempo here. Well, it looks like that on paper. I think there'll be a few taking their shot of trying to get the front early off, turn it up, and then there'll be horses trying to get off the rail. There'll be plenty of happening in the first 1,000 metres, and we just got to hope we can get the right helmet and keep getting a good clean trip into it. It's all about momentum in these races. You just don't need any bad luck. All right. Your final drive on Saturday night for Darren McCall. Girl from Oz, you've sat behind this mare many a time. She comes up with gate two. Is she a chance here? Oh, look, these mares are probably a little bit stronger than what she's been racing. I thought her run was quite good. Her last two runs have been quite good. She probably got a bit revved up on me last week, and I couldn't really bring her back in the middle of the mile. But, um, look, she's racing consistently good. Can she match it with some of these better mares? She probably needs a, really, a lot of luck in her race sort of run upside down. But, um, look, she'll be there to fill a hole somewhere. All right. Your best drive. Is it Minos? Can we put all our eggs in our basket here for Minos in the derby? Yeah, I'm, I'm going Minos. I've waited all month for this, so <laughs> I'm going Minos. Good stuff. Hey, appreciate the time. Appreciate you being here for the Constellations. We'll see you trackside Saturday night. Thanks, mate. Biggest night of the year in Queensland harness racing. This Saturday night, it's Blacks are Fake Race Night. The Grand Circuit event, we've got a 10 race program. Nathan Dawson is our reigning Australian driver of the year. Naturally, he's part of the action and he's got a good book. He joins us now. Nathan, appreciate the time. Nah, good to be on, Chris. Well, let's start with race one, an obvious place to start, our first race. And you've picked up the drive on Royal Cruiser. This is the Queensland Derby Consolation. Uh, what are your thoughts here on Royal Cruiser? First drive, obviously, behind this guy. Yeah, he's probably been going, um, you know, not too bad without a lot of luck. Um, he's probably been overdoing himself a little bit and just racing a bit too strong, so... Um... Uh, if we can get him to chill out a little bit, um, I think he'll run a good race. So is there a little concern about 2680 with this guy? Yeah, I, I think there would be. Um, you know, I think if he relaxes, there's, there's no concern. But um, you know, as I said, he's been overdoing it a little bit. And um, you know, hopefully he can re relax on Saturday night. In saying that, it's probably a little bit of a, an unknown with most of these horses, if not all, this, this distance. Yeah, that's right. You know, um, most of them are probably having the first run over the trip. And... You know, we'll know more after Saturday. All right. Doesn't appear to be a standout, but if you could pinpoint one yourself, what would you be looking at? Yeah, I think the other one of Burns is in good form. I'm um, racing well, so, um, you know, he's got quite a nice draw. So 
I think it's probably going to be take a bit of beating, but um, you know, as I said, I don't think my fellow's the worst in it. All right. Obviously referencing Novanta Rising, but uh, Royal Cruiser, like many, if he gets a trip and gets a little bit of luck, he's going to go a long way. So that's the opening race. What about race two? This is the Blacks of Fake uh, Consolation, and you're, you're driving a horse that you know exceptionally well in Deus Ex. He's got gate one. So the obvious question here, uh, can he lead? Do you want to lead? How do you see it early here with Deus Ex? Yeah, he can lead. Um, you know, I don't think I want to lead, though, especially over the long trip. Um, you know, I think his best asset is high speed, um, so I think we will be trying to find the right horse to release. All right, there's going to be a few aiming up early here. You've got Kanina Provlima immediately to your outside. You know how much gate speed he's got. Could he be the obvious one? Yeah, he's probably, you know, on the good draw and he'll probably be the first one there. But as I said, we'll just have to see what happens. I've, I've got the speed to decide what I want to release and, um, you know, we'll just have to see what happens at the start. He was awesome. PB time, Deus Ex, winning at the mile two starts ago. How did you grade the performance last week when fourth? Yeah, he's good. You know, he's probably gone almost the same time again. Um, you know, very rarely do they break 150. Um you know, and he's probably raced just as well as he did, you know, two starts ago. All right. 26.80, can he run it? Yeah, he can, you know. As I said, I'd like to find a helmet, and the less work I do is probably the better. All right. A couple of the key runners are off the second row here. Uh, a rotor who's in super form. Don Hugo was ginormous last time out. And then you've got Bluto, who's a little hard to read because he made that break last time out. Are you looking at the second row runners to be the hardest to beat? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I believe they're probably the main standouts in the race, um, you know, and they've got the form to back it up. So I think they're probably the ones that, you know, will take the most beating. All right. But you've got barrier one. You're going to be in the right spot. Yeah, that's right. You know, we've got barrier one. We've got gate speed, so we have options. All right. Well, that's race two. Uh, race three, we won't discuss this race because it's the emergency that you're driving. So if he gets a star Duke of Scotland, is he a chance? Yeah, I don't think he's out of place. You know, he's racing really well, but obviously he's stepping up and great again. But you know, as I said, I don't think he'd be out of place in that race. All right, let's go across to race five. This is the Group 1 Queensland Derby. Safer is your drive. He, he's a handful, this guy, isn't he? Yeah, you know, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve. Um, you know, but he's actually got a fair bit of ability. So he's racing well. Um, it's probably not an ideal draw after, you know, what happened last week, but... We'll see how we go. All right. He he was huge in defeat last week. Yeah, he was. He's really good. Um, obviously, it wasn't the plan to, to drive him like that, but the way the race was run, um, you know, he was super in defeat. All right. So, gate eight, inside of the second row, and it's 26.80. Are you concerned a little? Yeah, as I said, Ironclad kind of mixed his gate a little bit last start. Um, you know, and probably got us in a bad position, but... Hopefully this you know, week he begins a little bit better and we can posse up not too far away. All right. Are you confident that he will settle and are you confident he can run the trip? Yeah, I reckon he'll settle. Um, you know, and I think most of the Kiwis can run a trip. So um, you know, I'm pretty confident as long as he settles, he won't worry about the trip. All right. Again, there's no real standout in this race. It's a Queensland derby, so they're there for a reason. They've all got claims here. But if, if you get any sort of luck, you can take it. Yeah, definitely. You know, he proved last week that he's got a bit of bottom to him and, you know, he's also got that high speed. So if we get any luck, um, you know, in the right splits at the right time, um, you know, I think he's definitely good enough. All right. So his best asset, would it be his speed or his strength? I'd probably say his speed, um, you know, but over the mile, I think he can do a bit himself. So, you know, whatever we have to do, um, you know, he's got a bit of versatility about him. All right. Let's go across to the uh, the Trotters' Cup. This is the big Group 1 feature. Adele is your drive. Are you happy with the way she's going? Yeah, she's going well. Um, you know, obviously, the barrier last week, um, we just had to be careful and, you know, make sure she did everything right, which she did. But she got home well, and, you know, she can get a good spot again. Um, you know, she's not going to be out of it. All right. Knowing that she got away safely last week, she, she moves out a few spots, so she's got Gate 3 here on Saturday night. Can you just be a little bit more, um, you know, aggressive early here at the start with Adele? Yeah, I think it's probably better, you know, better barrier for us. I'm um, out in three instead of one. Um, 
you know, we're not really getting jammed up on the inside there. So hopefully we can come out a little bit quicker and, um, you know, find a good spot. Both numbers one and two, Van Sank top at the moment. Uh, they can get off the gate. And then you've got, you know, the obvious ones, Gus and Rockin' with Attitude. Looks like they'll, you know, run pretty hard into that first turn. Yeah, I dare say it's going to be a pretty, um, you know, quick lead time. And, you know, if I can just get a spot in there behind them, um, you know, I'll be laughing. All right. And then the last race on Saturday night, this is the three-year-old, Dragon. This is a race that he can win. He's drawn out in seven, but uh, I'm tipping you'll go back. And if he gets any sort of breaks going his way, is he good enough? He's actually racing really well. Um, you know, he's not having a lot of luck lately. We're driving, you know, along the fence and getting split slate. But he's getting home good, um, you know, in probably stronger company. So if we can get a nice trip into it and, and let him run home, um, you know, I definitely think he's good enough. All right. Reset the bar will likely run favourite here, but with any luck. Can he run the trip? Yeah, I don't think the trip's a problem. Um, he's a laid-back character, and you know he doesn't overdo it, so I'm not too worried about the trip. All right. Which race are you most looking forward to there on Saturday night of your drives? Uh, I think Adele. You know, I've always got a soft spot for her, and you know she never runs a bad race, so um, hopefully you can bring her A game and um, you know pop up at the right time. All right. We'll take the tip. Race 8, number 3, Adele. Nathan, as always, appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. Thanks, Chris. Time now to find a good thing or two for the program tomorrow night. Final night of the Constellations for 2024. We were able to get some joy last week. Uh, our last winner, Van Basten. Darren, you were keen on Duke of Scotland. Ryan, no, we won't go there. So we need to find a winner or two for tomorrow night's big card. Darren, you're off first because you had the uh, the spoils last week with Duke of Scotland. How are yeah, you playing? Yeah. Let's strike early, chart topper. Race one, number one. Probably unlucky to miss the derby, this guy. He takes on the consolation instead, comes up with the perfect gate. Unlucky last week inside the second line. So uh, options there for Nathan Jack all the way. And Captain's Knock, I think he's a good each way play as well. Currently black figure odds the drum, so certainly keen on his chances. Ryan, you can bounce back here. What have you got? Are we going to bounce back strongly, Chris? Yep. Two shorties for me, uh, Millwood Bliss in the Oaks, Gus in the Trotters Cup. Don't be, don't be scared to take the double. Okay, okay. we'll uh, take the multi there, Millwood Bliss and Gus. I'm, I'm singing from the same hymn book. I'm really keen on Millwood Bliss. Her form is super, so if you're going to take multis throughout the night, certainly include her Millwood Bliss. I think she's around the $1.50, $1.55 mark. That's good value for mine. Darren, your quaddie for tomorrow night. Yeah, so that first leg is the Derby, Minos, Bay of Biscay, Major Hot, 2 11, 12. Second leg, the Proto Star, 1 3 6 9. That's Fader Weights, the Highlight Reel, My Ultimate Barney, and Hesitate. Larry, number one in the third leg, the Blacks are fake. Redemption for him this year. And 5 6 9 in the Trotters Cup, Gus Rockin' with Attitude, Move Fasa Metro, $36 to 100%. All right, Ryan, your quaddy. Yeah, going wide in the Derby, Chris. Ironclad, Minos, Delirio, Kingman, Safer, and the bottom three, Babis K, Major Hot, the Janitor. Fingers crossed we get a result there, then we'll be sitting pretty into the Proto Star. Fate awaits the highlight reel. Miles McBarney, who was a clear winning hope. Uh, sweet on Lexi after the great win last week, and Hesitate, and we're bringing it home with the two shorties, Larry into Gus. Okay. Uh, Derby is open for mine. I'm going a little wide there as well. 2, 8, 11, 12, and 13. The Proto Star, interesting race. I'm going to play the numbers of 1, 2, 3, 8, and 9. Putting in Sanchez, he might be some sort of knockout hope, depending on the tactics of Fader Waits. Uh, Larry's a standout there in the Blacks of Fake. I want to go Gus one out, but I'm just throwing in a little bit of insurance there with numbers 9 and 10, Mufasa Metro, and London to a brick, $60 for 100%. You can play those quaddies to suit your own budget. So that is a look for Albion Park tomorrow night. 10 race program, we start at 5.18. Group 1s are plenty. It's been a real highlight over the last couple of weeks, guys. Appreciate your time and efforts. Enjoy tomorrow night. It's going to be super, isn't it? And if you're in Brisbane, get down to Albion Park to see a champion horse in Leap to Fame. Uh, it's going to be a cracking night. Four Group 1s, fade awaits for a lot of people out there. Yeah, too right. Best of luck tomorrow night. Cheers, Chris. All right, well, that wraps it up for weekend winners for 2024. Constellation style. We'll see you trackside at the Creek Saturday night.